Welcome to ITTV for Form 3 Science, where we continue into respiration. Today's lesson, gas exchange. So far, we've learned a few things here in our look at the respiratory system and respiration. Remember, respiration is the process whereby we produce energy in our body by oxidizing glucose. The oxygen needed for this process is brought, brought into our bodies by breathing. Breathing is defined as the exchange of gas between the environment and our body. We've had a look at some of the main features of the respiratory system, the parts of the lungs, the bronchus, the bronchial, and the alveolus. We've also looked at the special adaptations of the alveolus. Today, what we really want to look at is the process or the mechanism itself whereby air enters and leaves our lungs. For breathing to occur, gas exchange, a change in volume and pressure is needed. Remember that the air isn't actually sucked in by us or pushed out by us. What we really do is we change the pressure inside our thoracic cavity. Now the relationship that's very important for us to understand is the relationship between pressure and volume. Please remember that when the volume is big, the pressure will be opposite, which means the pressure will be low. So, when you have a big volume, you have a low pressure. When you have a small volume, you have a large pressure. This relationship is very important to remember because by changing the pressure in our thoracic cavity, we either allow air to enter or to be pushed out. Relationship between volume and pressure. When the volume decreases, the pressure increases. A simple demonstration shows the change in volume and pressure needed for inhalation and exhalation. So we're going to do a simple demonstration. Before I do the demonstration though, I'm going to go to the board here and draw what we're actually going to be doing. Now, for the sake of this demonstration, all we need is a bottle and two balloons. You take any plastic bottle and cut the bottom of the bottle off. Take a balloon and cut the balloon in half and then place the balloon over the bottom of the opening. Take another balloon and place it at the top, inside here, so that the balloon hangs open inside your bottle, like so. Now, the idea is very simple. If I pull this downwards, like so, the volume in here is going to increase. If I did the opposite and pushed upwards, like this, the volume inside here will decrease. By changing the volume, I'm also changing the pressure. When we change the pressure in this area, what we want to observe is what happens to the balloon. Does the balloon inflate, become bigger, or does the balloon contract or become smaller? This is very similar to what happens to our lungs when we are breathing in. If air enters into our lungs, our lungs have to become bigger. If air is leaving our lungs, our lungs have to become smaller. So this is the model. At the bottom of the model, I've put a cut-out balloon. This will represent your diaphragm. Up here, I've got a balloon inside the bottle. This represents your lungs. Now, if I was to pull downwards here, notice what happens to the balloon inside. As I pull down, the balloon inflates. When I pull down, the volume 
is increasing. As the volume here increases, the pressure decreases. Because the pressure is decreasing, air enters into the lungs. So, as I pull down, the balloons expand. We'll do that one more time. As I pull down, the balloons expand. That's inhalation. For exhalation, what happens is, I push the diaphragm up. Now, when I push the diaphragm up, the volume is going to decrease, which means the pressure is going to increase. Because the pressure inside is higher than the pressure outside, air inside is going to be pushed out. The air inside is pushed out. So, watch what happens to the balloons when I press up. They shrink and become smaller. They contract. We'll do that one more time. When I press up, they shrink and become smaller. So this is roughly how you breathe. When you breathe in, you increase the volume, air goes into your lungs. When you breathe out, the volume decreases and air is pushed out. When you breathe in, volume increase, pressure decrease. Air enters the lungs. When you breathe out, volume decreases. Pressure increases, air is pushed out. Air moves in, air moves up. Volume increase, volume decrease. Pressure decrease, pressure increase. And that is a simple model of how our lungs work. Now that we've had a look at that demonstration, let's try a couple of questions on what we've just observed. What is the relationship between pressure and volume? Now, the relationship can be written either way. When one increases, the other one decreases. So, it doesn't matter which way you write it, as long as you understand that they are opposite to each other. Have you written down an answer? Let's have a look. When the volume increases, the pressure decreases. Or you could write it the other way, when the volume decreases, the pressure increases. Either way is correct. What happens when the balloon is pulled down in the model? So, remember the model we had just now? If I was to pull down, what would happen to the balloons? Would they inflate or deflate, expand or contract? Let's have a look at the answer. The balloon inside inflated, expands. So remember, when you pull down, the volume increases, pressure decreases, air enters into the balloons. Now that we've had a look at that model and how it represents our breathing mechanism, Let's actually look at the breathing mechanism process and look at how we actually increase the volume or decrease the volume during inhalation and exhalation. During inhalation, the outer intercostal muscles contract, which move the ribs up and out. Now, if you were to do this at home, breathe in and breathe out, you'd be able to see this. So I'm gonna stand side on to you, watch my rib cage moving up and down. So when I breathe in, notice my ribcage has moved up and come out slightly. We'll do it one more time. When you breathe in, your ribcage moves up and out. That is the first movement. How this is done is by the outer intercostal muscles contracting. Now, how do you remember which muscle is it? The inner intercostal or the outer intercostal? Well, a simple way to remember is by using your shirt or your blouse. If you want to make this area larger, you pull your shirt outwards. So the outer intercostal muscles contract and your ribcage moves up and out. This is accompanied by the lowering of the diaphragm. Now, we have a special muscle that's called the diaphragm that sits right here. What happens to the diaphragm is it moves downwards. Now, by moving downwards, you notice that the volume in this area 
becomes larger. So by moving downwards, the volume becomes larger. The volume of the thoracic cavity increases. The pressure decreases as a result. Remember, volume and pressure are opposite. If the volume increases, the pressure decreases. Air from the outside rushes into the lungs. So as your pressure in your thoracic cavity becomes lower, remember the pressure outside is higher, it pushes the air into your lungs. So air rushes into your lungs. A summary of the process. Outer intercostals contract, ribs up and out, diaphragm moves down, volume increases and pressure decreases. Air is pushed into the lungs. Now that we've had a look at the processes that are involved in inhalation and you need to know all those steps, a common question that comes out is describe the inhalation process. So you need to say all of those steps. Let's try a question that's similar to what we've just been talking about. What are the steps in the inhalation process? Now remember, what I was saying is you've got to tell them every single step. There's a lot of marks to be got here, so if you can remember the steps, you're going to pick those marks up. Have you written them down? Okay, let's compare our answers. Outer intercostals contract, ribs up and out, diaphragm moves down, volume increases and pressure decreases. So remember the steps in the inhalation process because they're quite important and you will probably have to use them during your exams. Now that we've had a look at inhalation, let's have a look at exhalation. Before we have a look at it in too much detail, remember, it is a very much reversed process. So everything that we did just now in inhalation is just run backwards. For exhalation, the inner intercostal muscles contract, bringing the ribs back to the original position, moves down. So remember, to exhale, you need to move your ribs down. You have to make this area smaller. To do this, we use the inner intercostal muscles. Just now I said to you, if you want to try to remember expanding, making it bigger for inhalation, remember pulling your shirt, which is to make your shirt larger, that is the outer intercostal muscle. So to make it smaller, we use the inner intercostal muscle. If you take this part of your shirt and fold it, your shirt tightens. So remember, inner intercostal muscles contract, the ribs move down and back in. The diaphragm curves up. Earlier, our diaphragm was here. It moved down and became flat. Now, it relaxes and it goes back up to its original position. Notice the volume in this area. As my hands come back up, the volume is becoming smaller. This reduces the volume in the chest cavity and increases the pressure. So now the opposite is occurring. The volume is decreasing, but the pressure is going up. This expels the air out of the lungs. So when we have high pressure inside, compared to the atmospheric pressure outside, air moves from the high pressure inside to the lower area of pressure outside. So air is expelled out from our lungs. A summary, inner intercostal contract, ribs down and in, diaphragm moves up, volume decreases and pressure increases. Air is pushed out of the lungs. So remember this process for exhalation. Just like I said with the inhalation process, it is a common question in your exams and you need to know the steps. So let's try a question to see if you can recall these steps. 
what are the stages in the exhalation process. So remember here we are exhaling. What are the steps? Start with the intercostal muscles, then describe what happens to the ribs, tell me what happens to the diaphragm, relate volume and pressure, and then we will know what the stages are. Have you written down your answer? I know there's a lot to write. Okay, let's compare our answers. Inner intercostal contract, ribs down and in, diaphragm moves up, volume decreases and pressure increases. So remember those are the steps for your exhalation. More or less reverse of what happens during inhalation. Let's try another quick question. What happens to the pressure when the volume of the thoracic cavity increases? So this is just a question just to keep testing you on the relationship between volume and pressure. If the volume increases, what happens to the pressure? Let's check the answer. The pressure decreases. Remember, the pressure decreases. So those are the two stages of our breathing mechanism, inhalation and exhalation. Remember the model? This model always comes out in your examinations. The balloons inside represent your lungs. The balloon at the bottom represents your diaphragm. Sometimes they have tubes inside which would represent your trachea and possibly your bronchus, depending on the type of tubes they were using. Remember the processes, inhalation, outer, intercostals contract, ribs move up and out, diaphragm moves down, volume increase, pressure decrease. For exhalation, inner intercostals contract, ribs move down and in, the diaphragm curves back up, your volume decreases and your pressure increases. You need to know those two processes because those are the common questions that are associated with this topic. That's all the time we have for this lesson. Thank you for watching ITTV.